All right, this is part two of section 1.2 on the definition of a limit. So we're gonna come back to our notes now and finish those remaining example problems that we left off with in our previous lesson. So in our previous lesson, we got some practice with applying the definition by finding the largest delta for a given value of epsilon. Now today, we're actually gonna use the definition to prove that a limit exists. So in this example, we're asked to use the precise definition of a limit to prove that the following is true. We want to show that the limit of 3x plus 5 as x approaches 2 is equal to 11. Now to prove that this is true, we're going to follow two steps. Our first step is similar to the strategy that we used in our previous example on this note sheet. So when we found the largest delta, remember we worked backwards. So again, we're going to use this inequality so that we can find a delta that's in terms of epsilon. Okay, And then we'll work backwards so that we arrive at a statement of the form here. All right, so let's see that first step here in action so it makes a little bit more sense. Remember, we're gonna start with this inequality here, so the dis distance between f of x and l is less than epsilon. Now, let's just make some substitutions here. We know that f of x is 3x plus 5, so we have 3x plus 5, then minus our limit, which is 11, is gonna be less than epsilon. All right, now we're gonna work on getting this inequality here to be in this form. So it's gonna look more like that inequality. In other words, we want it to have x minus 2 on the inside of those absolute value bars because that's our a value, okay? So 2 is our a value. So we want our inequality to look like that. So let's just manipulate here. If I uh, simplify the inside, I have 3x minus 6, okay? And if I factor out a 3, now I have 3 times x minus 2 in the inside of those absolute value bars. Now let's pull that 3 all the way outside Okay, and now we're looking very close to what we want. If I divide out that 3, now I have the absolute value of x minus 2, so the distance between x minus 2 is going to be less than epsilon over 3. So this is what we've done. We found our delta here. Delta is epsilon over 3. We found our del delta, it's just in terms of epsilon. So now this statement is in this form here with delta equaling epsilon over 3. So the point of this scratch work here to work backwards is to be able to find that delta. Now that we found our delta, we will assume that this is true, okay? And we'll work forwards now to complete the proof. All right, so we wanna show that if the distance between x and a is strictly between zero and delta, then the distance between our function and L, our limit, is gonna be less than epsilon. All right, so we're gonna start with this inequality then, and we're gonna work our way forwards to get to this inequality. So we start with the distance between x and two is gonna be strictly between zero and our delta, which is epsilon over three. All right, so we wanna algebraically manipulate this statement so that it turns into the statement over here. So we wanna get epsilon all by itself basically on one uh, side. So that's a big hint here. Let's multiply by three throughout that inequality, okay? So if you multiply by three throughout, we have zero is less than three times the absolute value of x minus two is less than epsilon. So that's just by m multiplying by three throughout. Now, if I distribute that three into the um, absolute value here, I have, 3x minus 6 on the inside, okay? And after that, I remember, I want this to look like that, the function minus our limit. So let's just manipulate that by rewriting it as our function, 3x plus 5 minus our limit, L. This is algebraically equivalent to 3x minus 6. So now we have it in our form that we're looking for. All right, so that's actually the write-up for our proof, okay? So what this is saying is that if the distance between x and 2 is strictly between 0 and epsilon over 3, that's our delta here, then the distance between our function, 3x plus 5, and our limit, L, is going to be smaller than epsilon. In other words, for whatever value of epsilon you choose, and remember, you can continue to choose a smaller and smaller epsilon, you will always be able to find a delta. That delta will be in terms of epsilon. It is epsilon over 3. Now, in our final example, we will prove that a limit does not exist by showing that it does not satisfy our definition of a limit. So we want to prove that the limit as x approaches 0 of the absolute value of x divided by x does not exist. We will try a new technique okay, called an indirect proof to show that this limit does not exist.
So in an indirect proof, we're going to assume the opposite of what we believe to be true. Then we will show that this assumption leads to a contradiction. So because that assumption leads to a contradiction, our original assumption must be false. All right, before we begin our proof, I think it's going to be very helpful for us to graph this function. So let's draw a quick sketch here. So let's break down first our function so we can understand what's going on here with this absolute value. Now, an absolute value actually creates a piecewise function because it's defined for two different things, if x is positive or if x is negative. Now let's note also that the function is not defined when x is equal to 0 because that is not in the domain of this function, otherwise we're dividing by 0. Um, so let's talk about the two cases. If x is going to be positive, okay, then our absolute value, remember, it does nothing. It doesn't algebraically do anything to it, it just leaves it. Okay, so x is already positive, it keeps it the same. So we have x divided by x, which is equal to 1. Now if x is negative, okay, then our absolute value takes the opposite. So we have the opposite of x over x. These are going to cancel those factors here, and we're still left with negative 1 though. So the graph here is going to be a horizontal line. For positive values, that horizontal line is at 1, positive 1. For negative values, we are at negative 1. Okay, so this is the graph of our function. Now, as you can see, as x approaches 0, our limit clearly does not exist because we approach two different y outputs. But now we're actually going to prove this using our definition. All right, so let's assume that the limit does exist. Okay, so we're going to assume that the limit as x approaches 0 of our function is equal to, let's use one of those values, let's make it equal to 1. Now remember, if this assumption is true, then there exists, okay, some delta and some epsilon. So let's draw that in our graph as well. Now for some epsilon that we choose, okay, let's, since we're using the limit is 1, let these two horizontal lines here represent 1 plus epsilon and 1 minus epsilon. So now we should be able to find a delta, okay, such that we create an interval centered um, at what our value is approaching. So our x value is approaching 0. So we have an open interval. Let me write all this out, sorry. So then we should be able to find an open interval. Okay, in other words, the distance between 0 and delta here, and if we just algebraically simplify that, that ends up being from negative delta to delta, okay? Then all of our points that lie on our function here, these lie between our red zone, okay, which is, well, I used instead of L minus epsilon and L plus epsilon. I'm using 1 plus epsilon and 1 minus epsilon, so let's replace that with a 1 here. So it's going to fall within that red zone, okay? So what this is saying, let's go ba back to our graph now. So if that limit existed and it's equal to 1, then what, what it's saying is that we should be able to find an interval from negative delta to delta, okay? And these vertical lines are going to represent that. So here's negative delta and delta. Okay, so it's saying that if you have an x value that falls within that interval from negative delta to delta, then your function will always lie in the red zone. That's what a limit, remember the definition of a limit states. But here, as you can see, if your x value here is going to fall between negative delta and zero, in other words, if x is anywhere here, then we we end up on this portion of our function, which is not in the red zone. So it's not contained within that red zone from 1 plus epsilon to 1 minus epsilon. All right, so to come back to our proof then. So we've just shown, okay, that however, this is not the case whenever x, whoops, wrong interval, sorry. Whenever x lies between negative delta and 0. Okay, so therefore, our original assumption here, which states that we have a limit, does not, is, is false. So our assumption is false. Therefore, the limit as x approaches 0 of our function does not, whoa, 
that's a, not a D. <laughs> Does not exist. All right, so that is the basic of um, an indirect proof. So we started with our assumption here, okay? We started with what we thought not to be true. We started with the assumption that, hey, there is a limit. Then by showing through a contradiction that that's actually false, you can then state that your assumption must be incorrect, thereby making the original statement here true. All right, that is the end of this very short lesson. Um, so we're going to get practice with these types of problems. You're going to use them in proofs. You're going to show that limits exist or do not exist.